Yo, it's your boy Ryan, Northwest Sports Fanatics. Back at you with a new video. Today is Thursday, March 21st, 2024, with your boy Ryan and the Northwest Sports Fanatics. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button either now or on your way out. Donate to your boy if you can. Cash app dollar sign O R I O N N W S F or the YouTube super chat right here. We got Thursday night hockey, Seattle Kraken versus the Vegas Golden Knights. Puck drop is going to be here in just a couple minutes. We're just getting wrapped up with a little uh, wrestling on ESPN, as well as the March Madness going on the other channels. So let's get some music set up, and we'll get going here in just one sec. Hope everyone is having a fantastic day as we're getting closer and closer to the weekend. And then I had to hit you with a little hack on the thumb for Megan. Uh, I figured, you know, I, I'd take some extra time to see if I can convert the image the way that I want to. And I tried a few other times, but I just couldn't get it to look the way that I wanted. But then finally, you know, after going back and forth, back and forth, finally getting it formatted. And I said, you know what? You know, we need a win so desperately right now. What a better time to be able to put hack on a thumb against the Vegas Golden Knights. Let's go. I am ready. Megan starting off the dono train, off to a good start. $20 holla. OMG. You put the Winter Classic hack on the thumb just for you. That is worth the dono alone, especially the anxiety through the roof. Your dad's anniversary on Tuesday, and we're going to try to get you a dub here tonight. And uh, lots of action. The Ducks ended up winning their first rounder matchup there against South Carolina. So I like that, putting up 40 points against his former team. I like seeing that, and uh, nothing would be able to cap off my Thursday night you know, better than the Ducks winning in the first round in the tourney. Is that the Kraken finally getting a little bit of revenge against the Vegas Golden Knights? And it hasn't been good for us. It hasn't been pretty against the Vegas Golden Knights. We played them in October. We lost 4-1 on the road. We played them at home January 1st uh, at the Winter Classic, right? We won 3-0. So that one turned out in our favor. Then we ended up losing a heartbreaker at home, 5-4 and overtime about a week ago. And uh, we're going to try to get one more dub here before we have the end of the season approaching. Let's freaking go, baby. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Stacks on stacks. Racks on racks. A little cactus jack. Bang, bang. $20. Dollar, dollar. I, got, I don't know what's going on with this wrestling because this is supposed to be an ESPN broadcast. Um, hopefully, Puck Drop, it looks like they just put a, a, a message up here. So it looks like Puck Drop is going to be on in 10 minutes uh, since this wrestling is uh, you know going a little bit longer than they anticipated on ESPN. PN. Let's go. Appreciate you so, so much. $20 holla, 80 to go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. You got your uh, Fallout theme controller? Nice. Nice. And the pick. And the pick. Nice. I see you. Will do. Let me actually convert it over here. I'll send it to Sarah, and I'll take a look. I've seen it already, but other people may have not seen it. I'll definitely do that for you. Daniel in the building, what's good? Sarah in the building, what's good? And I figured, you know, I could have gone with the traditional, you know, ice behind me, you know, but I figured, you know, this is a special matchup. We got hack on the thumb. So I figured we'd get a nice Vegas nightlife background. Now at any point, you know, if I feel that we want to go to the traditional look, you know, we can go always right here. But we did this on the last stream when we ended up having the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning versus the Vegas Golden Knights. And I wanted to switch it up. And I figured, you know, play Vegas a few times throughout the year. And, you know, I think this would be a good time to be able to have kind of a bright, special background. And uh, I actually kind of like the, the way that this looks uh, for tonight's broadcast. So I hope you guys like it as well. And uh, we're going to get some photos up here shortly. Lauren in the building. Let's go. Let's go cracking. Let's get it, baby. $20, 80 to go. Smash that like button. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X, as well as the people watching on YouTube here. Appreciate you guys very, very much. All right, let's take a look at the controller here. Let me send it over. Let me send it over here first, and then we'll be able to take a peek. Thank you for doing the like and the share, Sarah, on the Twitter slash X. And if anyone does have a Twitter slash X account that could like and retweet the stream, I'd greatly appreciate it. 
Uh, like I said, the more people that we can get to do that, normally the magic number for me will be five. If we can get five people to like and uh, retweet it and like it, or at least four people to retweet it and like it, uh, you know, that would be good. But normally my number I shoot for is around four or five or more, and that definitely will help, uh, you know, get more people in the room and uh, you know, obviously for your guys' followers as well. I like the controller here. And then when is the controller supposed to show up? Next week? Nice. I see the little subtle details there. You got your little Aussie 12 on there as well. I like it. I like it. All right, let's go here. And we got about seven minutes until Puff Drop because they got this wrestling tournament on ESPN. And we're not talking WWE or AEW. I'm not sure if it's like a college wrestling tournament or something, but uh, I like it. I like, I like you got your little Vault Aussie 12. I like the color scheme with the blue. Um, it looks nice. It looks good. And I, and I like the background too with all the images. It kind of reminds me of like a... Uh, like a, one of those skater hoodies from a, a way back in the day that had a lot of the little patterns on it and whatnot. Uh, I like it. I think you did a good job. And uh, thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Megan, for helping out there on the Twitter slash X side. And uh, hopefully we can end the stream with a dub. Okay, here we go. They just switched it over. Let's go, baby. You know what it is. Gru. Yorkie. Yamamoto. Maddie, Yanni, let's go. Let's go. But we'll still not be a hater. You know, we'll make sure we give the proper, you know, love and respect to Ico and March Assault and all the other studs there. Uh, Vegas Golden Knights are right there with the Predators. Kraken are still supposedly in the hunt, but I mean, gosh, we're really far back. Blues, Wild, Flames are ahead of us. And then Preds and Golden Knight, uh, Golden Knights uh, obviously are the you know, cream of the crop there in the wild card. Here, let me turn this up here. And I'm ready to go. What other uh, photos would you like? You let me know and I got you. Oh, that should be good. That should be good. Yeah, keep me updated on March Madness. Uh, you know, if there's anything that uh, is important that's happening, uh, you know, in the matchups, or if you want to throw up some final scores or who won or who have big performances, please do. You know, to keep the chat moving, the people on uh, YouTube will obviously appreciate it as well as the people on Twitter slash X. Nice. You know, my buddy is playing it right now, too, and he messaged me and said it's fucking incredible. So, uh, yeah, I think he started playing it uh, last night or this morning, and he was messaging me, and uh, he was saying how incredible it is and I need to play it. So, at some point, I mean, I don't have a next-gen system, at least not yet, but uh, I will definitely have to go to his place and play at some point. Rooftop in the building. What's good? Yeah, I said it probably would take a little bit longer since it's a custom made one. Ah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. We'll find out. They lost last year or the year before, too. So Kentucky, you know, not really the same type of team. The Drake curse hits again. You know, this isn't like a Jamal Mashburn, you know, type of Kentucky Wildcats team. You know, after, you know, coaching changes, you know, Duke, North Carolina uh, and Kentucky don't really have the same as Steve. Even though we will see from time to time, North Carolina, number one, you know, or you may see Duke up in the standings, down in the standings, same thing with Kentucky. But it's not, it doesn't really have the same type of feel once you have a legendary coach that either retires or moves on. But uh, it'll be very interesting to see, you know, what teams end up making the final four, not only for the men's, but for the women's as well. Let's go. Shout out to Megan. Shout out to Lauren. I appreciate you guys very much. Even their share there. I like that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. And we're already at three and three. So we only need two more people to like and retweet it if they do end up coming through the room, uh, you know, through the Twitter slash X. And then we'll get more people to kind of come through. But uh, a nice nightcap. And I know it's late. 
you know, for some people, I get it. You know, it's seven uh, thirty nine Pacific, so I get the earlier time, and I get it. It's nine thirty nine in the Midwest for Sarah. Uh, you know, it's ten thirty nine if you're Judah and you're in the East Coast when he comes in. Uh, it's a little late, but again, I can't control the times. You know, when you end up having West Coast matchups, and uh, sometimes we're gonna do streams four o'clock Pacific. Sometimes we're going to do streams as late as 7.30 Pacific. So here we are, and uh, I'm excited. You know, I, I know this is going to be tough. Uh, we're going to be definitely a heavy underdog, you know, but hey, we got the Vegas, you know, Nightscape, uh, obviously, in the background there, right? We got an amazing thumb with hack on it for Megan. So, I mean, you know, we, we play up to the competition, so we're not obviously going to roll over and die. We're going to give everything that we got. Now, the first time that we played October 10th, we lost 4-1 on the road, which was kind of a given. But since then, we've really given it our all. We won the Winter Classic with Joey Decord and Net. We won 3-0 January 1st, 2024. And me and Megan and all the Kraken fans will never, ever forget that Winter Classic matchup, let alone the jerseys and that beautiful jacket that Hack has got in the thumb. But we played about a week ago. I did the stream and we ended up losing 5-4 in overtime when we were in control of that game for a majority of it. Uh, and it just shows you, you know, you can never count out Vegas no matter what. And that was a heartbreaking loss at home. Now this is the last matchup uh, unless somehow, some way, Seattle ends up making the wild card. Not looking like it's going to happen, uh, but you never know. You know, we're very far back in the standings. But again, if we can get a dub here tonight, uh, every single win from here on out is going to be meaningful for the Kraken fan base. Let's go. Let's go, baby. We got Gru. We got Bjorky. We got Kyler. We got Maddie. We got Yanni. Let's go, baby. Oh, those are beautiful jerseys. Wish we could wear those all the time. But we still will give a, a little love there to the Vegas Golden Knight. I see you. Oh, March Assault. No, oh, Eichel. I see you. Okay. Let's go. Matt in the building. What's good? Well, considering that you come in and you try to, uh, you know, uh, do what you do here, no bounty, sir. No bounty. No poaching my people either. So did you enjoy Rooftop waking up at... Uh, two three in the morning and and doing those uh korea matchups there with the dodgers and the padres this last matchup was very high scoring and then obviously a lot of controversy with joe otani and you know obviously uh his interpreter and, and everything going on and you know figuring out if otani has a gambling problem you know if the interpreter has a gambling problem if both of them have a gambling problem or if they're just going to try to blame it on the interpreter uh and, and so that way that they don't have a scandal because you can, you know obviously you don't want to have to uh suspend you know the biggest face in baseball right but again you know justice does need to be served but again you know when you have money and you have the power you know uh, obviously if the interpreter takes the fall we wouldn't be surprised uh but again i am kind of wondering how much is shohei otani involved you know in this whole gambling ring you know because it's not like we're talking about a couple you know thousand dollars you know which would still be kind of a lot right or even if it was like forty thousand not 4.5 million i mean talk about a fucking addiction so we'll figure that out but here we go we got the puck drop and here we go yeah i doubt justice will be served but I did get a chance by uh, having a good mental health day yesterday. I ended up watching X-Men 97 on Disney Plus, 10 out of 10. They got two episodes that dropped. I highly recommend it. So I got that out of the way. Uh, Shogun on FX, five episodes in. They got five more this season. I watched all five this morning and late last night, 10 out of 10. Highly, highly recommend that show as well. Uh, and then obviously got uh, you know back in tune with 911, who went from Fox to ABC, Grey's Anatomy, Station 19, uh, and then I still got to do Law and Order SVU, uh, Law and Order Organized Crime, and then I ended up getting on uh, The Cleaning Lady, and then obviously I have a few other shows that I need to kind of get caught up on. But Hulu's got a free preview for a month right now, so if you end up signing up, if you don't have it, 
you get a month for free and then it's only like eight bucks you know a month after so i figured you know what uh, i need to catch up on some shows you know even though i got cable out in the living room but it's like when i'm streaming sometimes i miss some of these shows and i do have a dvr in the living room too but Again, sometimes it's just nice to be able to watch things at your own pace, at your own time. And uh, I'm definitely glad I got caught up on those things. So again, X-Men 97, just like the X-Men, slightly different animation and intro, but it's awesome. It's very, very good. And anyone that's a fan of the X-Men cartoon in the 90s, you'll absolutely love the new one. And then Shogun, golly. Uh, you know, the, the acting, the writing, uh, the, the brutality, uh, so good. So uh, if you're looking for new shows to watch, I would highly recommend those too. Let's go, baby. Yeah, I hear you. Anytime, you know, uh, you know, things get that way, I get it. But uh, again, if you feel like coming through and, you know, uh, hanging out with us, you know, I'll definitely be able to throw up some photos and we'll be able to talk and hopefully uh, make things a little bit better for you at that time. So, All right, baby, here we go. Matt, appreciate you. Go. Let me uh, let me make this a little bit bigger here. Turn down the music as well. Gotta adjust all my screens. Head out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X, as well as the people on YouTube here in the room. Love you. Appreciate you. Well, Disney Plus, uh, you know, doesn't really have a whole lot of content. But anytime something new drops like that, you know, I, I got friends, you know, that usually will hook me up. So it's like I, I I'm not paying for it. I don't got it myself. And normally. Uh, the only reason that I would have Disney Plus is if there's a new Star Wars, uh, you know, show that dropped or something like an X-Men uh, that, you know, like a brand new X-Men cartoon. And that would definitely be worth it for me. Maybe not to purchase, but, you know, definitely have to talk to my friends and say, hey, you know, if you're not using this, let me let me let me check out this X-Men 97. And so I got that out of the way and um, they're going to be dropping episodes. I don't know every week or how they're going to do it, but uh, I'm definitely going to be in tune to that. All right, here we go. Let me take a look at the lines. What do we got here? Oh, Howden. Hutton, Kolasar, Wa, Howden, and Hug. We got Larson, Yanni, Tanev, Tolvanen, and Evans. Let's go. Yeah, basketball and football is completely different, but it's nice to be able to see, uh, you know, one of the Ducks players make some history, you know, go against his former team and drop a 40 spot. That's nice. And, you know, they should have been able to beat the team anyways. Uh, and, you know, we already know with South Carolina, you know, maybe with the women's a little bit different than the men's and whatnot, but I don't really know how far we're going to go. Uh, I know there's a few people that had Oregon as a sleeper to make it all the way to the final four. I'm not sure if they're good enough to do that. Charles Barkley was one of those guys that had Oregon in the final four. Um, and I think he even had him in the championship game losing to like Arizona or something like that. But, you know, we, we, know, we know the Chuckster uh, is hilarious on TNT, but he's not really uh, the most uh, correct with his predictions. But hell, if he ends up being correct on that prediction, I'll take it. But uh, I highly doubt that they'll get that far. Uh, I would be happy for them even to get to the Sweet 16. That's, that's what about I was about to say. If they get to the Sweet 16 and then lose, that's probably where they cap out at. Anything above that, they're overachieving. So we'll see on how that goes. Schultz, Dumoulin, Schwartz, Burakovsky, and McCann. Let's go. And we'll get some more photos up here for Megan once we get into a uh, commercial break. 15-14 left in the first period. Oh, we got a purple tie, gray blazer, white and gray checkered shirt underneath, and we got a nice royal purple tie. Oh, hack. I like your style, baby. I like it. Third season as the Kraken head coach. Let's go, Kraken. And I'll put you on the thumb. And I'm not usually going to put coaches on the thumb that often, but I figured, you know, Megan's going through some ups and some downs, and I figured this would be a great way to cheer her up and uh, surprise her. and. Uh, if we can get a dub, that will really, really help not only me and Megan, but for all the Kraken fans, uh, you know, with all the struggles that we've had, you know, in the last uh, couple of weeks. So I'm hoping we can find a way to play up to the competition and find a way to win, even if it's only by a goal. I mean, we don't care. 
you know, if it ends up being four, three, we'll take it. Three, two, we'll take it. We just don't want to get blown out. But it's all going to be up to this guy right here. We already know Joey Decord has been struggling and uh, ultimately at this point, not going to be playing that much uh, unless Gru needs a day off. And uh, hopefully Gru can find a way to be crispy, you know, and uh, have his head on a swivel. And, uh, you know, uh, giving up a goal per period, I think is fair. You know, so as long as we can hold Vegas to three or less, we're going to have a chance. But once they go over three, then the percentages go down quite a bit. Oh, I got you. It took me a, a little bit longer to, to get it on there, but I was like, you know what? It's like, I got to be able to find a crispy hack image. And you know, I know that you enjoy the uh, Winter Classic stuff as much as I do. You know, we love that stuff. And I was like, oh, maybe I can do the one with him in the jacket. And it took me, uh, you know, because like with formatting tools, you know, with Photoshop and these other, um, you know, programs like Pixel Style, it's not as easy as people think to make thumbnails and whatnot. Like sometimes when you're transferring an image over, it also has to be based off, you know, the size and the definition of it, you know, and what it looks like uh, and the higher resolution it is, you know, and then also you got to convert it properly. So once you drag the file over, it doesn't just magically pop up. Like sometimes you got to size it up and sometimes it comes out distorted where you can't use the image or you have to crop it and you can only use like the upper half or the bottom half, you know, cause like some of it, like an arm is missing or, you know, part of the, uh, you know, glove is like distorted. So, you know, I have tricks to be able to, you know, figure things out to be able to size up a, a photo bigger, you know, where you maybe just have an upper body image, but that one turned out perfect. And uh, I'm happy that uh, we got hack on there and hopefully that'll lead us to a victory here today. Let's go, baby. Tata, Larson, Bjorki, Yamamoto, Evans, let's go. Yes, keep me up to date with everything there, Sarah. Good job with that. I appreciate you. No, I got you. I understand. You know, we go through a lot of, uh, you know, ups and downs. And, you know, we, we have battles with mental health every day. Not everyone uh, is going to be in a good spot every day. And the biggest challenges that we have are with ourselves. You know, obviously our environment that we have uh, is, is a big part of it, too, if you're around toxic people. But still, you know, a lot of people, including myself, you know, your, your mind will race at times. And sometimes it's not the most positive, beautiful thoughts, you know, that are running through our heads uh, at all times, you know. And sometimes you need a little bit of a pick-me-up, uh, you know, to be able to understand that you're not alone, that a lot of us go through the same type of thing. Um, and like I said, if there's anything that I can do to make the transition a little bit easier for you uh, between now and next week, you let me know and I got you. All right, 13.01 left in the first period, knotted up at zero. Howden, Martinez, Carlson, Hutton, Amadio, Thompson, and Nett. I think we could. I think we can get this one tonight. I really do. It, it, it's going to be difficult. Vegas at home is very, very good. It's, you know, but look at the jerseys that we're wearing, baby. And you know, the funny thing is, I didn't even know that we were wearing these tonight. I just did the. I just did the. You know, the hack. You know, Winter Classic because I wanted to do something nice for her. And then, lo and behold, we're wearing the Winter Classics, which I love. And uh, we obviously beat them once wearing them. Let's wear them again. So I like where Hack's mindset is. Hey, you know, let's wear a special jersey. And, you know, sometimes it's destiny. Sometimes it's fate. You know, and I didn't even know they were wearing those jerseys tonight. But I thought, you know, this would be a cool thing to do. And then we get rewarded with the Winter Classics tonight. It's a, it's a double bonus, baby. Let's go. Yes. So this is the third time that we're wearing it. And um, I have, you know, like I said, I, I, I've been busy catching up on shows and everything. So I haven't had a chance to, you know, go through. You know, and they don't really do a very good job on the NHL on giving you the projected lineups. And I know there's lines, line one, line two, line three, line four. But I, and I know that Emerald City and a, a couple of those Kraken fan pages sometimes will do like projected. You know, but they don't really know for sure, but they're projecting. And usually they're pretty close, you know, most of the time if they have an insider in there and then they have the graphic with the faces. But they don't really put it out every game. So a lot of times I don't even know who's going to be in net or what the starting lines are going to be unless I watch the pre-show about a half hour before. And then if I can see them skating around, then I can kind of get an idea of what's going to happen. But. You know, I wish they would have a little bit more clarity with that. You know, I, I, like when they do with baseball, they show the lineups one through nine and who's pitching. 
I wish they would do that for basketball and the NHL before every game to, you know, not only for streamers like me, but just for people in general. So you kind of have an idea what to expect going into the matchup. So, yes, it must be fate for us, huh? So, and, and you know, we got a good record with them, so we might as well try to get a dub here tonight. $20, 80 to go. All right, let's get some Winter Classic photos up here. We're at commercial break. And we're just getting back to the action. Let's go. Oh, Everly to Maddie, just wide right. God, those jerseys are so fucking beautiful, man. If those were like our regular jerseys that we wore, um, God, those are so beautiful. Like I can't keep my eyes off of them. Eichel. Nice save by Gru, baby. Gru Bawa with the save. Maddie Beneers, last season, 24 goals. This season, only 10. 33 assists, 18 this season, 57 points last season. He's only at 28. We need you, bud, and we need you. Let's go, Gru. If we're going to have any chance in this game, it all starts with you. Exactly. Better than the salted caramel, caramel, however you want to say it, Vegas World Classic jerseys. I totally agree. And the action is a little bit far away, but I believe maybe Vegas is wearing their Winter Classics as well. I have to kind of take a little peek up here because it kind of looks like they're wearing them. I'm not sure if those are their typical road jerseys or, or those are the Winter Classics as well. Because obviously, if we, when we wear the Winter Classics, usually we'll wear that at home. Damn it! There's a goal. Eichel. Damn it. Jack, why you got to be doing that? Jack Eichel, assisted by Jonathan Marchesol and Braden McNabb. Oh, buddy. One, zero, Vegas. Yeah, they're wearing theirs. They're wearing their, uh, they're wearing their winter classics as well. Because usually you'll have your darker jerseys, and then you'll have your lighter jerseys. And, yeah, they're wearing their, their winter classics uh, as well. That's kind of cool that they decided to uh, wear the winter classic jerseys twice. You know, I like that. Elliot in the building, what's good? And we'll give uh, Vegas some love with their first goal. We'll give them their spinning logo. Elliot, what's good? Lots of runs scored. Yoshinobu got, uh, got rocked, huh? You know, he, he definitely, uh, Padres came out swinging to be able to even up that series 1-1. I did not wake up and, and watch both of those live and whatnot. But uh, for the people that did, uh, salute to you, you know. You know, definitely being in that, you know, Korea time zone, uh, 3 a.m. Just, I mean, I guess if I didn't go to sleep, you know, but just with all the things that I got going on with Paisley and everything else. High sticking. Six shots on goal for Vegas. Five for the Kraken. Uh, ref, get out of the way. I can't see. You stayed up and watched both games? Nice. Energy drinks on both days or, or no? Oh, hack sighting. Woo! Hack looking dapper. Nicely shaven. Got the, got the nice little comb. Looking good. Got the gray blazer. White undershirt with the gray checkmark boxes. Nice purple tie. Royal purple. Woo! Let's go. Let's go. Like, sub, donate, comment, share, baby. Let's go. Couple more uh, likes to get. Oh, we just got there. I was going to say a couple more to get to 10, and we just got there. 10 more to get to 20. 
So shout out to all the people out on Twitter and uh, X, as well as on the in the chat as well here on YouTube. One zero Vegas. He said Mountain Dew. You got it all jacked up on Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew regular, code red, or did you try uh, one of like the green apple or like the icy blue? I mean, they're starting to come out with like more and more custom flavors and whatnot. All right, Vegas power play. Come on now. We, we can't have a Captain Jack Eichel, a March Assault, and all the rest. Carlson, take off. We need to be able to we need to be able to respond. Otherwise, you know, it's gonna get out of hand early. Eichel with the one timer. Oh no. Defense. Dumoulin, Gord, Borgen, and Cartier. Come on, guys. Hang on. Hang on, baby. Less than a minute left in that power play. Regular Mountain Dew. Yeah. Code Red. Yeah. Code Red is nice. Especially Code Red out of the freezer, you know, or anything really Mountain Dew out of the freezer, you know, and then it's got that nice, super icy chill to it. It's not completely frozen like an icy or a slushy, but it's almost to that point. So then it keeps the drink even colder when you have it out, you know, so that way, once that ice internally melts, it's still icy cold, like it's been in the fridge the whole time. That's, that's the ideal temperature that I like my drinks at, you know, where it's like, Super, super, super cold right out of the freezer. And those first couple sips are just insanely good. And then as it sits on your desk or wherever you're at, it starts to cool down a little bit, but not that much. It still feels like it's still in the fridge when you do it that way. Oh, good save. MSU in the building. What's good? What's your take, Elliot, on the... Uh... Shohei Otani and the interpreter and all that. What do you think is going on with that? You think Shohei Otani is involved? I mean, besides his money in the bank account, trying to be able to, you know, pay off the dues that uh, supposedly his interpreter racked up. How do you rack up four point five million in gambling? Like, how does someone give you credit to owe that much? You know, it's like it's obviously an illegal gambling ring. And if they know that you have money and you're linked to Otani, even if Otani gives you 200000 300000 or if the Dodgers pay him that or, or he uh, pays him some money as well. You know, so, but even if you're making two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 a year to be an interpreter, either getting paid by the Dodgers and Otani or one or the other, uh, how the hell do you get $4.5 in debt? I mean, Jesus Christ, dude. I talk about ruining your life. I save. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard of a gambling debt that high, you know, but I, I know that there's people that obviously have gotten killed for a lot less, you know, in the Vegas desert that they're buried in, in there, you know, and with the mob and all these other things that have been going on. But again, you know, once Vegas started getting teams and once they started promoting gambling, you, you had to have known at some point or another coaches, players, you know, referees, you know, uh, not every single one is going to participate. But some of them are, you know, you just have to be smart enough not to do it in your name, you know, or your bank account. Everything gets traced back, you know, to the uh, actual bank account. Because how do you think they pay you when you win? It's through your bank account. So they already know who it is, you know. So when they ha when they pay you, it goes into your, you know, bank account or your, you know, your little account through, you know, the gambling site. And then if you withdraw it, you know, it has to link to something. So... But Shohei, you know, being such a star that he is, I don't know if he has a gambling problem himself or not, or if, or if his interpreter is going to take the fall for him, or if the interpreter is 100% guilty himself. But overall, just not a good look for baseball. For real, he should be, obviously, oh, Shohei Otani and the interpreter don't watch NWSF, because if they did, Jesus Christ, bro. I mean, if you want to talk to, uh, you know, your cousin here, you know, your Asian persuasion cousin, I mean, you know, we all Japanese, we all in the family. There's no way you could be 4.5 million if you come in here and asking for advice. I'll tell you that right now. He's a terrible gambler.
But when you have that much money, why? You know what I'm saying? Like even if Shohei Otani's contract is backloaded and not frontloaded, you're like, you have so much money that there's no reason to do it, you know? But I guess that's why some people are addicted to things like gambling and strip clubs and certain things, you know, that, you know, once, once, and obviously with the gambling, it's going to be more severe than strip club addiction, you know what I mean? And whatnot. But, you know, there's all kinds of addictions, you know, with people that like to party and alcohol and all that. And, you know, it makes you kind of wonder, um, you know, if the interpreter is like an alcoholic, you know, or something like that. And he's just making bets when he's drunk or something. I can't understand how you get into $4.5 million debt unless you're drunk or you're on something. Eight shots on goal for Vegas, seven for the Kraken. 7.31 left in the first period, 1-0 Golden Knights. All right, take a look to see who's in right now. Tata, Dumoulin, Larson, Bjorki, and Yamamoto. Let's go, baby. But again, you know, when you're rich, rich, you know, you see how, uh, how many uh, NBA players, MLB, NFL, NHL players that just blow their money. You know, they make 15, 20, 30, 40 million dollars. And then all of a sudden, in like a year or two, they're broke and they're filing for fucking bankruptcy. Like, where the fuck did all the money go? It's like, you know, they start living that lavish lifestyle instead of like, putting it into a business and so that way they can get some money coming back to them you know they're just buying the lavish cars the million dollar houses that are like 10 million you know there's no point of having a 10 million dollar house i get it if you're like rich rich and you want to get like a million dollar house or two million but there's no purpose of getting like a 20 million dollar house like well, you, you know it's like regardless if you're single or you got a girlfriend or whatever it's like, oh, let's get a $20 million house that's got 14 bedrooms and 10 bathrooms and there's like two people living in it. Like, why? You know, just so you can floss and flex? Um, you know, not smart, you know. And again, you know, a lot of them with the jewelry, the ice, the cars, you know, the houses. And then all of a sudden, a couple of years, they got nothing. Only the smart ones really uh, invest. And you got to realize, you know, professional sports isn't going to be forever. Any chance of one more upset before the night is done with the March Madness tourney? I don't know. That's a good question. I did. Seemed a little odd, the timing of it all, too. Like, what, like how often does a, a glove break? Like, never. Like, never. 5.45 left in the first period. Come on, Gru. Seattle's got to help him out out there. And we got to make sure that we're controlling Eichel because in almost every Vegas game that I've done, he's never scored first. This is like one of the first times that I've seen him score first. So if Eichel scores first, that usually means that he's going to score two goals or possibly a hat trick. Um, so I'm hoping that we can contain him because normally it's going to be like March Assault or Carlson. Uh, you know, it's usually someone else. And then Eichel usually will get like some assists and then maybe a goal in the second or third period. But you know, to score right out of the gates, that makes me a little scared. But uh, we haven't given up anything since then. So hopefully we can stay strong and we can play, you know, uh, tough and, and play with purpose with these uh, Winter Classic jerseys on. You look good, you feel good, you play good, right? Nice. I'm glad that you got a, got a dub because, I mean, imagine waking up at 5 a.m. both days and just getting your ass kicked on both. I was a little surprised on how many runs were scored on the game number two compared to game number one, but uh, obviously, uh, you know, Yoshinobu, you know, getting fucking rocked for like, what, five runs that he gave up and he got pulled in like, what, the first inning? So once you go down 5-0 in the first inning, then you already know you're probably going to be pacing for a 10 to 15 run game. So, because probably the pitchers after him didn't really get a, a chance to warm up. You don't, you don't expect, you know, your, you know, million dollar guy, multi-million dollar guy with you know, Shohei Otani, right, to go in there for his first start and then to get rocked in the first inning and get pulled. All right, they were assuming that he was going to pitch six innings and then and they would pull him, you know. So it definitely, uh, you know, fucked the whole momentum up and, you know, based on, you know, the progression of the, the matchup. Let's go, Gru.
Take care of your mental health, y'all. I got you, though. I promise you, anyone that's got mental health problems, depression, anxiety, you're going through it. You know, like I said, you come through on the on the stream. We can make things better. You know, it's not going to be fully better, you know, depending on how deep of a hole you feel that you're in. But we can definitely make things better that if you show up and hang out with the people that we have here. You know, we got more people that are a part of this channel that would give their shirt off their back than other channels. I feel that, you know, there's a lot of really good quality people, and I do appreciate all of y'all. Ten shots on goal for Vegas, six for the Kraken. Less than four minutes to go in the first period. We got Schwartz, Larson, Burakovsky, McCann, and Riker Evans. Let's go, baby. Anathan, Kolasar, Wah, Howden. All right, Vegas, I see you. Oh, Ha Seong Kim went 0 for 8. Oh, that's tough. And uh, I, all the Koreans were probably just getting all hyphy, you know, cheering for him, you know, trying to give him some extra motivation. And maybe that was the pressure. You know, he's like, oh, shit, I'm playing in front of, like, all the homies, you know, all the cousins, all the people that were rooting for me, you know, that, you know, are Padre fans because of me. And then, uh, you know, some guys crack under pressure. And did he have any close – you know, ones where he was like running towards first on like a grounder and almost ran it out or were all of them pretty bad? Did he like strike out in most of them, pop up, ground out? Did he have any of the eight at-bats where that were even close? That's tough. Oh, for eight in the home country. Sack fly. Okay, so it wasn't a complete loss. He at least got, uh, you know, sack fly and someone scored off the sack fly. So it wasn't a complete failure. Go, crew. I need you. Let's go, baby. Winter Classics, baby. He's got to keep control of Captain Jack Eichel and Jonathan Marchesol and then William Carlson. Those are the trifecta. And we need other guys to step up, like Yanni, Maddie, Yamamoto. And then I would love to see Bjorky get going here tonight, too. Let's go. 1 0, Vegas. Yeah, but, you know, getting the Hulu subscription and getting uh, caught up on a lot of the shows uh, made me happy. You know, to, you know, get get caught up uh, in, you know, with Grey's Anatomy starting up again, season 20, station 19, season 7, last season of station 19. Um, and then, like I said, I still have a few other shows that I need to get caught up on, but Shogun, I watched five episodes of that. There's still five more to go, 10 out of 10. X-Men 97 on Disney+, Plus, 10 out of 10. So if you're looking for something to watch, I guarantee that you'll love both of those if you haven't got a chance to watch either of those yet. And then I still got, you know, Law & Order, SVU, Law & Order, Organized Crime. I'm watching The Cleaning Lady, trying to get caught up on a few of the episodes that drop. Um, and then there's another show after The Cleaning Lady as well that I need to get caught up on. That one's pretty good too. Cyberpunk with the share. Appreciate you. Sure, I got you. And then I like 911 Lone Star, uh, but I don't know if the new ones have started up yet. But Shogun is amazing. Good Doctor, I got caught up on that. Good Doctor is amazing. Alert, Missing Persons Unit. That's a good one, too, on Fox and whatnot. So, you know, I always try to be able to tune in to the spring and the fall lineup with shows. And, um, you know, I can always go to my go-to stuff, but anything that's new... I like to be able to, you know, soak as much of that as I can in. Yes. Yeah, me too. Hopefully the support will uh, be better this year. I'm excited for baseball season, though. Really? Wow. I'm glad they did it. Glad. I'm glad they. he's still on the team. There with a dollar. Appreciate you. Stacks on stacks. Racks on racks with a little cactus jack. Bang, bang. And then we got the Bray Wyatt documentary coming up in a couple weeks. Receiver coming out in summer. And they got all kinds of really cool stuff that's going to be coming out with wrestling and football. Baseball season just about a week away. 
and then we'll be going back and forth with NHL baseball. We'll still be doing WWE once a month. You know, and we'll sprinkle in a little bit of uh, March Madness at some point, either the men's or the women's. You know, once we get to the Final Four, or the championship. NBA playoffs, I'll do a little bit of that. Not a lot, but a little bit. Let me know what you want to do for a photo, Sarah. You want some Caitlin Clark? What you thinking? Schultz, Dumoulin, Schwartz, Schultz, Schwartz, Dumoulin, Burakovsky, Yamamoto. They got both of the S's in there. Fallout, nice. On Prime, I have Prime, nice. Yeah, I don't have like every single subscription, but I have enough friends where if I need something, they'll take care of me. But I think I'm gonna end up keeping the Hulu subscription uh, around. You know, I feel that it's the most valuable besides Prime. I feel like Prime and, and Hulu are the best. Netflix is good, you know, a couple times a year, like, you know, like a couple months out of a year, but I don't think Netflix is good enough to have every month throughout a year. I mean, unless like they have something amazing like Stranger Things, uh, you know, then it would be worth it for me to have it for a couple months then. But, you know, but other than that, or like a, you know, a quarterback or receiver documentary about NFL players. But I just feel like Netflix has too much stuff that it doesn't really interest me. Like I look at a lot of the, the top 10 and I only usually see like one thing that I would actually watch or maybe two at the most, but sometimes none. And I'm like, you know, but I think with uh, Amazon Prime and Hulu, you'll never get bored with either one of those. All right, 17 seconds left in the first period. And so when I'm looking this up, what should I type in? Do you have a last name? Uh, how should how should I? Uh, I gotta be able to look at the you know the options for photos and whatnot you want to give me like uh, as much information you can first name last name uh or any other tag words that i could attach to it that way i can find uh more photos for you that you want the more uh, information that i have on my end uh, the better you know first name last name you know different tag words that are associated with that person things that they've been in and then i can uh, find more i can go down the rabbit hole a little bit deeper Okay, there we go. I was going to say, I just need a little bit more. You're more familiar with that world than I am. I used to play like Call of Duty, you know, like on Xbox, like 360. <laughs> and, and like, you know, and some of the other things back in the day. But, you know, I haven't been on the Call of Duty scene in, in quite a long time. So, I mean, my friends have it, but it's not something that, you know, after my Xbox 360 got the red eye, I kind of gave up on it. That's the only uh, Xbox, you know, system I ever bought. You know, but you know, I'm a PlayStation guy, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed on getting a, a next gen, you know, PlayStation Five or Xbox now. But the, the red eye definitely uh, killed it for me. One zero Vegas ended the first period. All right, let's get some photos up. I couldn't remember the spelling of his last name, so I figured you could help me out with that. And let me know what you want to do as well, Sarah. I got you too. Hack on the Fun looks great. Michael Pittman Jr. Okay, I got you. All right, let me see if I can uh, see. Uh, the more information you give me, the better. Oh, right, here we go. I got a good one here for you. You'll like this one from the actual game. Oh, there we go. 
That one's from, gosh, what's that one from? Modern, Modern Warfare 3, I think, I believe. Crazy how realistic the uh, graphics are in games on the next gen systems, and they're just going to keep getting better and better and better as the years go on. It's incredible. Nice. Nice. I get a Michael Pittman here for Sarah, and then we'll go back and see what other photos we can find for you. One zero Vegas after the first period. We're still in it, baby. for both of you. Oh, Michael Pittman Jr. in college. We got another crispy one. A little HD 4K coming up. Crispy. Elliot helping out on the Twitter slash X. I appreciate that 
as well. Thank you, thank you. Rooftop, shout out to him. Thank you for that. All right, so we got six and six. Perfect. That's really what we need. That'll definitely help out. Shout out to Elliot, Cyberpunk, Matt, Megan, Lauren, and Sarah, as well as Rooftop. Thank you. Let me know where you guys want to go photo wise. Anything else that you want to be able to see, Megan or Sarah? Anything that you want to see right now, Matt? You know, while we got some time, while we're waiting, you let me know and I got you. Eberly, Larson, Tolvanen, Veneers, and Evans once we get into the second period. I haven't seen the Kraken wear these, the alternates, in a minute. I wonder when we're going to wear these jerseys. The little teal blue. Kraken blue. Yeah, I'll hit him with a couple duck players, and I'll hit him with a, a Tay-Tay. get a brand new crispy bow crispy bow for my boy matt Woo! crispy he said he said give me two tays Ducks. Tim McGraw wearing the Caitlin Clark jersey. Nice. to throw up Jermaine Kusanat. Hold up. We got to throw up Jermaine. Throwing up a 40 spot today. That's not revenge. I don't know what is. Scoring 40 against your former team. In the tourney. I see you, Jermaine. Transferred from South Carolina to Oregon in 2022 and then dropped 40 to upset them in the tourney, baby. 14 out of 22 shooting and six assists. So it's not like he went 14 for 40. Like he actually had a really good shooting percentage. Ice-T just messaged. He said, guess what? SU just got picked up for season 26. That's my boy, Ice-T. All right. I think a lot of people picked Oregon to win. 
I haven't. I actually have not heard anybody that didn't pick them. I think everyone that did the bracket that I know of picked Oregon to win that matchup. So, you know, we might not be the best in basketball compared to football, but we're no scrubs either. Dana Altman is a great coach. We actually have one of the best top 10 programs for basketball and football combined. You know, we're one of the best in the country. They're good at both. We're going to be better at football, and we're going to have a chance to win a championship in football before we do in basketball. But in basketball, I mean, we can get to the Sweet 16, uh, you know, pretty regularly. Uh, sometimes we'll get knocked off, but usually we can win a, a game or two before we get knocked off. You know, we just don't have the depth like some of the powerhouse teams do in college basketball. Well, Altman has been great since he's, you know, you know come over, so... My dog, Jermaine. One zero Vegas. All right, let me see if I can go with some Tay Tay throwbacks. All right, man. Wipe the drool off. Are you lucky you my boy. All right, you can soak that in. I'll squeeze in one more for you. And I'll give you, I'll, I'll even give you a recent one. It's your lucky day today. There you go. Matt wishes that he, uh, she was wearing his number on the neck. 87. It's your lucky day, brother. You got Creighton over Oregon. Yeah, and most like I said, most people have Oregon winning like one or two games and then getting eliminated. So it just depends if you think uh, they can win the next matchup or not. And uh, we'll see if the momentum can carry over, you know, uh, with Creighton, if that's the mat next matchup or not. But if they end up winning that, um, I wouldn't be surprised. Like I said, Dana Altman is a great coach. So it just depends on if we have talent, you know, enough to be in the, in the enough depth on the bench to keep up with some of these other teams. So, But also, too, you got to remember, you know, to, to knock off Arizona and then Colorado and pretty much like win the, you know, the Pac-12, you know, in the last year of the Pac-12. I mean, how many teams could say that they could do that, you know, Oregon basketball, Oregon football let's go but we'll find out but charles barkley has them going all the way to the final four championship so i think that would be a little bit of a stretch i don't think even oregon fans think that they're going to go that far and there's a little bit more depth with some of the other teams but again it's a tournament for a reason so all right this is before the game started and that's after eichel scored before after but we need to get something going here Eberly, Larson, Tolvin, and Veneers, Evans. Got to give Vegas the boot. Got to be electric at some point. Take care of your mental health, y'all. You're in the gutter? Come here. I'll make things better. Guaranteed. Look at Hack on the thumb. Beautiful. And I'm really liking the, uh, the Vegas nightlife background. I mean, I can always switch it up and we can go to like traditional ice, but I mean, you know, I already did this one on the last broadcast. So I was like, you know what? I like, I like going, theming it up, you know, plus we got the nice uh, NHL cards on the side anyway. So 
I like I like bright and inviting. You know, you got I got to be able to give you the the pop with the thumb in the background. You know? Elliot, what, uh, anything that you want to be able to see, brother? You want me to throw up some Padres? Who, who, who has done good in the series, Elliot, that you were proud of against the Dodgers? You got a particular player that you were proud of that actually stepped up and did well? We already know how ha Seon Kim kind of dropped the ball a little bit in, a, in his home country there on 0 for 8 with the, uh, you know, pop-up RBI and whatnot. Oh, hi, Livy Dunn. Hello. Um, why why they got to have Livy Dunn just pop up on my television? All right, I'll leave it down then. Nice little power couple with her and her boyfriend. Professional baseball pitcher, Skinness. You know, LSU is starting to pump out those athletes, man. He's gonna be, he's gonna be pretty good too. One zero, Vegas. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times I just have to find stuff that, you know, that's going to format and fit the screen. And uh, a lot of times they don't have a lot of options. I go through many, many options. So even if it ends up not being the particular game that, you know, of those two teams playing, like if you can see a scoreboard that's got, you know, another team that's playing, that's okay. You know, as long as I actually, you know, have a few of the, the climate pledge, you know, options. And usually for me, it's like, you know, we'll go here, you know, obviously when they have it like, uh, you know, with the blue lighting and whatnot, and then uh, obviously here, but even if it's someone else playing, I don't think really anyone pays attention that much to care. So, uh, and again, and it's like, I try to find images that I'm in the middle where, you know, otherwise, you know, if you end up having uh, images, sometimes it'll be like a side angle and it just doesn't look that good, you know. So I try to find the best image that will look good while I'm streaming, uh, even if it ends up being, a, you know, from a picture from a different opponent. So, Bogots? Okay. Once we get to a commercial break, I'll get you some Bogots. Xanda. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squeeze one in right now for you. I'm squeezing it. Well, I'm 0 for 2 right now. All right, hold on. All right, let's see if the third one will go. 0 for 3. Like, uh, they, they're not a... All right, let's try the fourth one. 0 for 4. All right, come on. We can't go 0 for 5. This one's got to go through. Oh, 0 for 5. Oh, they just, they just got no love for Bogarts, huh? All right, how about this one? Wow, 0 for 6? you got to be shitting me. All right, how about this one? 0 for 7. All right, this one's got to go. Bogarts, finally! Out of eight photos, only one formatted. Jesus. But it's from the game, at least. Got you. Doesn't matter if I gotta wait, 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 wait. I got you, buddy. Appreciate you. All right, one zero Vegas. 17.42 left in the second period. Dumoulin, Schwartz, Burkowski, McCann, Evans. Let's go. Yeah, first one to Homer. Yeah, he was on a little bit of a tear, wasn't he? I saw Ken Griffey Jr. was there, uh, you know, just like Randy Johnson is doing a lot of concerts and baseball games. You know, you're going to see a lot of the big unit, Randy Johnson and Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, all over the place, you know, covering baseball and different events. Uh, and it was cool to be able to see Griffey and Mookie, you know, adapt each other up. And, um, you know, it gives them something to be passionate about after, you know, leaving the game. And for Randy Johnson, he was already doing photography while he was at USC, you know, back in the 80s. So it was something that was a true passion of his. And I think with Ken Griffey Jr., uh, the, the photography passion kind of happened, you know, not 
back then like Randy Johnson did. It was a little bit after his career ended, but they're both really, really good at what they do. Judah in the building, what's good? Judah's like, it's almost midnight. Let me see if O-Dog is streaming. Yes, he is. Judah's like, it's 11.39. I'm chilling with my cats. Let's see if O-Doggy Dog is on YouTube. There he is. Judah. What's going on, Judah? 21. 79 to go. <laughs> Megan's like 2.39 Friday afternoon. 14 shots on goal for Vegas, eight for Seattle. All right, let me turn the music off here since we're getting back into the action. Isn't this the second year in a row Kentucky has done that, though? Either last year or the year before, they lost also. So you can't really count on, you know, name recognition, you know, based off the past. Like, you know, when you've had guys like, you know, Coach K or Calipari and, you know, you, you've had that history, you know, with certain schools, you know, or with Dean on North Carolina. It seems like North Carolina is like maybe the only one that can kind of stay afloat from time to time. But really, like Duke and Kentucky had a pretty uh, big drop off, you know, from what they used to be, you know. But, it, you know, of course, if you don't have that coach, recruiting isn't going to be the same. You know, so you got Dean Smith there, you're going to get the recruits, you're going to have Calipari, you're going to have the recruits. Though those guys leave, you know, it's going to be kind of difficult, you know, unless you have the right coach in there. It's like with, uh, you know, Saban you know, leaving Alabama, there's definitely going to be some people that are still going to go to Alabama for Deboa. But there's probably going to be a lot of them that are going to be like, well, if I have a choice between going to Alabama and Georgia, you know, you know, they are probably going to pick Georgia unless they feel they can start right away on Alabama. And just because Saban isn't there, it just doesn't mean that Alabama is going to completely fall off the face of the earth. At least we wouldn't think so. It's not like you're going to go from being undefeated to like a seven and five team. If that ends up happening, then uh, someone will get fired real quick. But we would assume that Alabama will still end up being a top five or top 10 team, you know, even with Saban uh, moving on. But every year after Saban retires, we'll have to see what the recruiting looks like. And every year it'll probably get slightly worse, you know, unless they can continue with the wins. And if the wins start dropping off and Alabama starts being like an eight and four team, nine and three team, instead of a team that's undefeated and only losing one game a year, then they're going to be losing recruits to Ohio State, Michigan, Georgia, Oregon, Texas. You know, they're going to go somewhere else. So I wish the best for them, but that's just a sad reality. You know, when you end up losing, same thing that goes for Harbaugh in Michigan. You know, a lot of those players that were committed to Harbaugh, now they're like, well, uh, if he's not there, I don't want to go. And I, I get it, you know. At least the, for Oregon, regardless of who our coach is, we're still going to be able to get people that want to come here, you know, based off the uniforms and the helmets and, and the, you know, kind of the camaraderie and, and what we present. But it's just nice now with those two guys gone that Dan Lanning, you know, moves up even higher with Ryan Day and Kirby Smart, uh, you know, so and then Sarkeesian. So if you got to think those are the top four coaches in college football and Oregon's got one of the top four, which is pretty cool. You know, I, I've been waiting like my whole life to be able to have us, you know, get back to this point since Chip Kelly and we're finally there, but we still got to be able to prove that we can, you know, beat, you know, the rivals and the big boys. And uh, we'll find out how good we really are once we get into the big 10, which I still think that we're going to be top two. It's going to either be us or Ohio state for years to come. So that's a good sign. You know, and our goal is going to be, you know, 10 wins or more, you know, undefeated seasons, one loss seasons, and at the very worst, two loss. Like, we're not trying to go nine and three, eight and four. Fuck that. You know, we're, we're trying to go 10 and two, 11 and one, 12 and oh. So, you know, easier said than done. I get it. You know, I understand how difficult it's going to be. Yeah. Well, you already know what it is. It's the Drake curse. Anytime Drake ends up, uh, you know, attaching himself to a particular program, what happens? It seems like that program or that team loses 80% of the time. Maybe not every time, but it's like a lot of times, you know, if he associates himself, 
you know, with a particular program, like he's like wearing the, the, you know, the, the, the uniform, like the warm up suit sitting with the player. Like, why the hell is he sitting with the players? You know, and that was a long time ago when they had better players and whatnot, but well, like D book and whatnot, but still. Yeah. He's got him in the championship final four and the championship. I believe he has the Oregon ducks losing. I think what, I think what, what was it, Arizona? Is that who they had in there? So. I don't know. That's a little bit of a stretch. We'll see. I mean, if, if they can get to the sweet 16, I think that would be a pretty good success, but anything above and beyond that would be shocking. Oh, hold on. I got to switch it up here. Give me a sec. All right, there we go. Wow, stick went flying. 15 shots on goal for Vegas, nine for the Kraken. Let's go. We need to get into double digits here. One zero Vegas. Carlson, Marchesong, Hannafin. What do we got here on the Kraken? Larson, Gord, Tanev, Cartier, and Evans. Let's go. You're always good company. Pish posh. You're always good company. Like I said, especially if you're going to be going through ups and downs. And like I said, you know, if you got other things that you got to do in the background, that's fine. But, you know, you never have to feel pressure to type. You know, this, you know, for us here, you know, it's like, you, you know, you type when you want to, you know what I mean? And as long as we have a good chat etiquette, you know, and, and we're vibing with each other, you know what I mean? Like, good save. Good save by Grew. Let me delete some of these other photos. Yeah, also what I think uh, makes it a little bit more difficult to predict with March Madness is because most people don't watch college basketball during the regular season. So they don't really have a good idea on how good certain teams are you know, and how hot they've been, unless you're paying attention all year round. And the people that are watching a lot of the games, like if you have a favorite team and, you know, you're watching a lot of college hoops, those are the people that are going to have more of an insight on what's going on. Everyone else is just kind of throwing darts at a fucking board, you know, hoping that they end up, you know, looking at the record and, uh, you know, and then just, you know, using their, their gut and then hoping that they pick right. You know, but a, a lot of times it's, you know, just pretty much guessing and hoping that you pick right. Same thing with like the women's, but, uh, you know, obviously the women's tourney has got a little bit more juice to it with the players that they have. And you know, that's true too. When you have more notable big names from the women, you know, like, you know, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and Paige Buecas, you know, compared to any of the men, I mean, like who's the biggest superstar, uh, in college basketball for a, a, a guy, there isn't anyone, you know, as big as those, you know, on the women's side. So. Oh yeah, Deadpool's great. Are you kidding me? Bull, yeah, Deadpool. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Marvel stuff is typically pretty good. I mean, you know, I know you like Star Wars like I do, but I just try to keep an open mind on everything. Like I like, I like Iron Man. You know, Deadpool. Uh, you know, I like Batman. You know, for DC and stuff. I, I, am I going to watch and enjoy every single DC movie or every Marvel? No. You know, but you know, Avengers was amazing. It just depends on who you connect with character wise. Oh, hack on the mic. Oh, hack on the mic. Tell them. 
I haven't seen hack on it because it's an ESPN broadcast. So they got hack on the mic. Gray, uh, gray blazer, white, and uh, little uh, checkered undershirt. Got the, the purple tie with the little designs on it. Looking fresh and clean. Yeah, but how many people actually know who that is? You know, like like nationwide, globally, I doubt very many. You know what I mean? Like they just haven't been promoted, you know, the proper way. And again, it's like you you know more name recognition out of the women than the men. That shows you where the men's game is at. You know, and they wonder why you know uh, you know certain ratings with the NBA and basketball in general are aren't really the greatest. You know, you got to have the players, and you also have to be able to promote it the right way too. But also, too, with a lot of the college, you know, they don't stay long enough for us to be able to vibe and fall in love with them, to fall in love with programs. A lot of times it's like one and done, you know, or maybe two years if you're lucky. It's very rare where you get guys that are staying for four or five years, like in college football, on the college basketball side. It's like as soon as they're legally ready to go, boom, they're gone. And they're either playing in overseas or trying to be in the NBA. So I feel that that part of it has ruined college basketball for the men's as well. You know, because you never get enough time to be able to fall in love with players. It's like you have one good year and then they're gone and then the next wave comes in. One year, two years, and then the guy's gone, you know. Unless unless it's like a uh, player that uh, is a son, you know, from a player that played before, like when we had Steph Curry from Davidson and then we knew Del Curry was his dad. Then you're like, oh, okay, let's see, let's see if the son is better than the dad. You know, but a, a lot of times if you don't have that scenario – Unless they're putting up like 40 points a game, you know, most people aren't really going to care. Nine thirty left in the second period. One zero Vegas. Eberle, Larson, Tolvin, and Benitez, Evans, Golden Knights, Martinez, Stevenson, Hutton, Carrier, Mantha, Thompson, and Grubauer in net. Nice seeing a uh, hack on the interview. Love seeing that. Come on, Larson. Less than 10 minutes to go in the second period. 1-0 Vegas. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X, as well as the people in the room on YouTube. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Come on, Maddie. McNabb, Marchesault, Theodore, Barbashev, and Eichel. This is a tough line that they're going against right now with Vegas. We have to be very careful here. Anytime you end up seeing Eichel, March Assault, and either Carlson or Barbashev, it seems like something always ends up going good for them. Alexiak, Gord, Borg, and Tanef, and Tolvanen. Not the greatest lineup here for the Kraken as far as scoring is concerned. Okay, no worries. Enjoy. I've been hearing great things about that game. I like Hack's tonality. Like you hear certain people when they talk and they have a very calming or, you know, tone. Like, you know, when you, it's like, you know, people that go on YouTube or, you know, if you go on Twitch or, you know, and then you listen to certain voices, certain voices, uh, you know, are soothing and, you know, you're attracted to that type of voice and it it's not like cringy on your ears. And obviously everyone knows at least one person on YouTube or Twitch. It's got like, they might be popular, Right. You know, but they might just have kind of an annoying voice or kind of like you know, high pitched up and down. So but with Hack, he, he's got really good tonality, you know, and you can tell that uh, he wants this. You know, and hopefully that we can come up with the right line here. And he just made a line change. Tata, Alexia, Gord, Tanef and Cartier. Let's go. Yes, I do, too. It's very soothing, you know, and you, you can't say that for every. Uh, every coach, 
you know, like I said, you know, like everyone's got a different type of personality, but a lot of times communication, you know, on the way that they talk to other people and you can kind of feel a vibe on, you know, are they a player's coach? Are they a disciplined kind of guy or maybe a little bit of both? Uh, and obviously we know that most coaches on the NHL, they have that fire in their belly, you know, and they'll let it loose and they'll, and you have to, you have to be able to show that emotion. You know, if it's not every game, you know, in certain moments, to make sure that the players don't get lackadaisical out there and they understand, you know, what, what the goal is at the end of the day. 9.02 left in the second period. All right, what do we got here for the Golden Knights? McNabb, March Assault, Theodore, Barbashev, and Eichel. Tata, Alexia, Gord, Tanef, and Cartier. Let's go. Come on, Vegas does not deserve to win with those uh, ugly-ass Winter Classic jerseys. Come on, Seattle. But I hope that we start uh, wearing these Winter Classics uh, each year. I don't know if we're only going to wear them this year and that's it. That would be a damn shame. They're way too stylish and too colorful just to only wear them this season. I hope that we implement them uh, you know, moving forward. Even if it only ends up being once a year you know, in the future, I, I would think that would be awesome. Yeah, you gotta drop the you gotta drop the f bomb sometimes. I mean, there's not too many jerseys that you see that already look like a Mitchell and Ness throwback. You know, like a very expensive throwback. That's what the Kraken jerseys look like, and it's cool to be able to see them uh, rock them. You know, it's like. And not every hockey jersey is created equal, as we know. Just like in the NFL, MLB, and NBA, not all of them are created equal. And a lot of the stuff from the 80s and 90s is far superior than a lot of the jerseys that we see now. I mean, especially when you saw all those amazing throwbacks in the NFL that they wore this season. Um, you know, uh, you can't ask for better jerseys than that with Philadelphia, you know, with the Eagles and their throwback, with the Kelly Greens, Tampa's, you know, with the Creamsicle Orange, Seahawks with their throwbacks from the 80s and 90s. You know, the Oilers, uh, you know, when they end up rock rocking those. It's just cool to be able to say, even the old school Patriots ones, it's like, you know, those are so undefeated. Colts? Good pass. McCann? Good pass. Eberle? Tolvin in. Just blocked. Come on, Kraken, we're on the power play. Let's go. Eberly, Schultz, McCann, Tolvin, and Beneers. McCann and Beneers in at the same time. We have an opportunity here. 17 shots on goal for Vegas, 11 for the Kraken. we got a minute left in this power play. Let's go. Come on, baby. Come on, Bowie. Do we need a little Bowie love? We don't got no goals yet, but... I, I got to swing it. I got to swing it. Get it going. Come on, Bowie. We need it. Air raid offense. Yeah, air raid is fun to watch. Come on, Riker. Don't fumble the bag. All right, Bjorki. Okay, looks like they just had a line change. Schwartz, Larson, Alexiak, Beneers. Let's go. Oh, a penalty. Offsides. I almost feel like we need to get into a fight, you know, to kind of uh, interference. Fuck. Carlson, Theodore, Hannafin, Eichel, Schwartz, Larson, Alexiak, and Beniers. Come on. Well, first. You need to lay out how many coaches actually run that offense and then type that into the chat and then we can go from there. But any type of like running gun, spread offense, you know, that's why I ended up watching, you know, the Florida Gators, you know, in the 90s with Steve Spurrier and, you know, and the crew, you know, I kill your Jacques Green, Rydell Anthony, Danny Warfel. 
that style of football I really loved. And then obviously with Chip Kelly, you know, an innovator before his time for the Ducks. And then you've had guys like Cliff Kingsbury, you know, uh, you know, running at Texas Tech with Patrick Mahomes and, and a few others. All right, Western Conference playoff picture, Jets, Avalanche, Stars uh, in the Central, Pacific, Canucks, Oilers, and Kings, Wild Card, Preds, and Golden Knights in the hunt, Blues, Wild, Flames, and they have Kraken in there, but they're just trying to be kind. We're not really in it. March Assault, Stevenson, Theodore, Barbashev, and Eichel on the power play for Vegas, Dumoulin, Alexiag, McCann, and Cartier for the Kraken. Come on now, four on four. Less than seven minutes to go. Getting closer to that six-minute mark. Come on, Kraken. I need more ice time with McCann and Veneers in together or McCann and uh, Bjorki together. We need goal scorers in at the same time, at least two out of the five. You know, when you only got one guy out of the five or none, it makes it kind of difficult. And then if they're not playing good defense on top of that, but so far, Gru has done a great job. He's only given up one goal, you know, and, you know, what, 35 minutes of playing? Got to find a way, though, to get some offense going. NC State up 12. One on three. Can, can we get more Kraken players with some help? How is McCann the only one down there? You got one guy for the Kraken. You got the goalie. You got Thompson. And then you got three other Vegas Golden Knights. How do you expect to score when you only got one guy down there? Tough angle by McCann there as well, but still. It'd be nice to actually have someone there for a rebound. Wow, McCann had two opportunities right there by himself, one on four, but just couldn't get it in. Stole the puck away. Tough angle. Went top shelf. Good save there by Thompson. Then go off the rebound. McCann again. But great positioning by Thompson there. Uh, he just got uh, hit right in the in the mask, too. The bell got rung. Thompson's still in. He said, hey, I got hit in the head by the puck. I'm okay. Fuck it. All right, less than five minutes to go in the second period. 1-0 Vegas. Come on, Kraken. Five-plus minutes for Vegas without a shot. But that's almost like a, a cue for them that they're about to score. You know how that happens. Martinez, Carrier, Corlesar, Howden. I mean, this lineup that they have in there is not really that likely to score, but they are on a power play. Mantha, Hannafin, Mantha, Grubauer, head on a swivel. Martinez, Theodore, Carrier, Kulasard, Howden. Come on, Kraken. Eberly, Tata, Saw, Stumalin, Veneers, and Evans. Let's go. Less than four minutes to go in the second period. 1-0, Golden Knights. Let's go. At least we're not getting blown out like 3-0 or 4-0. So we do have a chance. I mean, these winter classics give us a little boost in energy. Good save by Thompson. Thompson playing like Aiden Hill out there. Maybe better. I mean, Grubauer is doing his job. Can we get some offense, please? You know, it's like it's it's frustrating when you end up watching performances like this too, because it's like you know the Mariners in the past, where it's like you have amazing pitching and maybe you only give up a run early, and then you haven't given up anything since, but you can't get anybody to score offensively. But I feel that with the Mariners this season, uh, we're the sleeper team in Major League Baseball. 
Some people think we're going to finish third behind the Rangers and the Astros. But don't be surprised if we overachieve, if we end up winning the division this year, next year, or the following year. But it could be this year. You know, it's possible that we win 80 to 90 games, 80 to 89, and we, you know, play kind of like last year. But if the pitching and hitting can come together, there's a chance that we could end up getting 90 to 100 wins and maybe even more than that, maybe 100 to 105. Uh, you know, we started off with only like a win uh, in, you know, preseason baseball. And then now we've gone on a little bit of a heater. I believe our record now is like 11 and 13. And at one point it was like one and eight, you know, one win. We were the worst team in, uh, you know, the Cactus League and, and the Grapefruit, you know, obviously preseason baseball. And you don't want to have the worst record going into Major League regular season in about a week. So I like that the batting averages have gone up and me and Reflect were looking at that. And as of a day or two ago, not including today's game, uh, they were one of the best teams uh, overall in batting percentage as a team in the, in the whole league. So uh, we've gotten kind of hot in, in the last two weeks, three weeks. So I like that. And hopefully that'll carry over into the regular season. All right, McNabb, Marcus, Theodore, Barbashev, and Eichel as we go to commercial break, 342 left in the second period. Alexiak, Gord, Borgen, Tanef, and Cartier. Let's go. Come on, baby. We're doing a good job, Gru. We just got to maintain. Watch out for Marchesol and Eichel. Who's going to be the hero? Yanni? Maddie? Kyler? Bjorki? Hey, Drew, you're doing your job. I'm proud of you. But what about the offense? Let's go. Help a brother out. Defensive minded game here. Shots by period 12 in the first, only five in the second. Six in the first for the crack, and nine in the second. So we've, we've tried to ramp it up, but the defense by Thompson in net for Vegas has been fantastic. Yeah, a lot of idiots. It just shows you that, you know, professional athletes, you know, not, they're not necessarily larger than life, you know, type of people. They're just regular people that just so happen to, to be really good at something, you know. And sometimes when you have money and you make bad decisions, dumb shit happens, you know. Eighteen shots on goal for Vegas, fifteen for the Kraken. Come on. Schwartz, Gord, Borg, and Tanef. Carlson, Hutton, Mantha, Hannafin, and Wah. Let's go. It's like it's like Gru has been in the crease and not been getting a whole lot of help. It's like he's Oh, good save by Gru. Power play for Vegas again. Let's look at the stat line real quick after Jack Eichel's goal in the first period. 20 shots on goal for Vegas, 15 for Seattle. 29 hits for Vegas, 18 for Seattle. Six penalty minutes for the Kraken, two for the Golden Knights. And, of course, the what do you think the faceoff percentage is? Of course, it's heavy for Vegas, 60%, 59.3 to 40.7. So, I mean, how do we expect to win when we're not even leading on any of the categories? we got to find a way. Come on now. Come on, Seattle. Especially when it's like this close. Fuck, we should have lost the, we should have won the last matchup when we were ahead almost the whole time and then we ended up losing 5 4 in OT. Like, if it ends up going to overtime, we're fucked. Like, we can't win in overtime at all. Uh oh, Tanev, are you okay? Uh oh, Tanev's going to the locker room. What happened? Oh, Tanev sacrificing his body there. Uh, Kraken players, you know, uh, using their body 
and, and you know having that puck go 80 90 miles an hour on their stomach that cannot feel good hope he's okay that's a second player in two games that have gotten roughed up they've had to go to the locker room after taking a puck to the stomach and plus we need Tanev out there he's like the enforcer he's our turbo you know we need him to be able to beat the shit out of somebody oh he's okay he's out of the locker room now just now uh, on the bench Grimacing a little bit, but he'll be back for the third period. 17 block shots for Vegas, 12 for the Kraken. 13.1% on the power play since the All-Star break. Tied for second in the NHL, Vegas. And they're great at home. Very difficult to beat them. A minute 12 left. Still on the power play for Vegas. Barbashev, Eichel, Marchessault, Stevenson, Theodore. This is a good lineup in for, for Vegas to get a goal. Tartar Larson, Alexiak, and uh, oh, they got Tanev back in. What a tough son of a bitch Brandon Tanev is. Eichel, wide right. We need to have someone light a fire in our bellies out there. I mean, it's not like we're down 3 0 right now. Stevenson, Marchesault, Theodore, Barbashev, Stevenson, Eichel. Good save, good block. I mean, Eichel has been on the offensive right now. I mean, if we had uh, Joey Decord in net, he'd already have a hat trick by now, Eichel. Just based on how he was been playing. Eichel to Theodore, setting him up. Good save. 38 seconds left in the second period. Can we get some defense? Can we help out Gru? Instead of having one shot after another, after another, after another, I mean, we're not doing ourselves any favors here. I mean, how, how many shots do you expect Grubauer to save? Doing a hell of a job. Less than a minute to go. All right, Riker Evans is back. There you go. Matt took some time to type. Right through the crease. End of the second period, 1-0, Vegas. All right, well, we're still in it. All right, end of the second period, 1-0, Vegas. Let me know what you guys want to do uh, for photos. While we wait until the third period starts, you let me know. See if I can find an Iowa spinning logo.
I'm more excited to watch her play than anybody else in the tourney. There you go. Hey. Iowa Stunner Shade. Okay. Hope she puts up 40, 50 points, at least in one of the matchups, 40 or more. And also not being a ball hog while doing it. And that's a nice thing about her. You know, she can rebound, she can take a charge. She's a good passer. She doesn't have to ball hog it to get 40. And that's what makes her special. You know, she, she should be taking most of the shots for the team. That she's the best player in the country, but she doesn't have to force it like other past number one players have in college women or college men. So very excited to see where that goes. Yes, sir. I mean, the way that I watch it, I mean, you know, obviously we know what Lincoln Riley and Cliff is where he can do. You know, they do a, a good job. Uh, you know, I, I'm trying to run that particular offense. Uh, you know, Sonny Dykes had a little bit of success a couple years ago with it. Um, Josh there at Tennessee, you know, uh, is pretty good with it, obviously, uh, with Milton, you know, at QB. So a lot of people have their kind of tweaks to it, you know, based on how they run things. But it, it kind of just depends on who you like watching and what kind of weapons that they have at quarterback and receiver to make it exciting. So if you're looking at Tennessee, uh, USC, uh, you know, and, and you're, you're looking at some of those, you're, oh, okay, you know. All right, take care, bro. He said it's 1217. I got to go to sleep with my cats. Have a good one, brother. Have a great Friday. What's the schedule for Caitlin Clark, Sarah? From the logo. I think that Sabrina is still in, uh, at Eugene, you know, because that would be another person to keep an eye on, you know, but obviously it was during the COVID year, which kind of ruined everything for everybody. She didn't ever get her proper due, and I really do believe that the Ducks women would have won the championship that year, too. At least they would have made it to the Final Four at, or the championship, but I think based off the depth that they had with Sabrina, you know, I think there would have been a very good chance that they could have won it all. But we'll never know because of COVID. Saturday at noon, my time, first round. I was about to say they haven't played yet, so. Yep, yep, exactly. Drew Locke was there, yep. So Josh has been able to run that system, not only with Drew Locke, but also with Milton as well. So it seems like as long as he's got a quarterback that is somewhat good, you know, he'll be able to, you know, coach up those players to be able, I mean, it's not like Tennessee is going to win a championship. It's tough as hell in the SEC, as we know, but every once in a while, they'll have a few upsets here and there. Come on, Kraken.
Connor McDavid highlights? Oh. All right, let me know what you guys want to do for photos here. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X, as well as YouTube. Love you. Appreciate you. Third period is going to start here. Ten minutes and counting. I got. I got to take a look at the scores. I've been so busy today. All right, let's take a quick look at uh, the scores here so far, and then we'll go and let me go to the stats of the matchup real quick. So we'll get to that first. So uh, shots on goal, 23 for Vegas, 16 for Seattle. 30 big hits for the Golden Knights, 19 for Seattle. Six crack and penalty minutes, only two for Vegas. And face-off percentage is ridiculous. 62% for Vegas and uh, 38 for the crack, and we need to find a way. I'll get you some Kenny Moore here in a sec. We've got Canucks 3, Canadians 1, Ducks 3, Blackhawks 0. The matchup here, Golden Knights 1, Kraken 0. Lightning and Sharks knotted up at 1. And then final score, Rangers 5, Bruins 2. That's surprising. Blues 5, Senators 2. Good win for you, Sarah, there. Red Wings 6, Islanders 3. Devils 4, Jets 1. Good win there for uh, Odin and Aiden. Hurricanes 3, Flyers 2 and OT. Preds 3, Panthers 0. And then uh, Oilers, eight, Sabres, three. Wow, Edmonton with eight. That's what they were probably talking about, the highlights. How many goals did, he, did Connor McDavid have? Did he have any? Or was he just a, an assist machine? So he had a couple assists. Wow. All right, tomorrow we got Hurricanes and Caps at four. Penguins and Stars at 5, Blue Jackets and Avalanche at 6, and then we got Kraken Coyotes at 7, so obviously we'll be doing the Kraken game tomorrow. Saturday, we'll figure out what we end up doing there. The no Kraken game on Saturday, and then on Sunday, the Kraken play the Canadiens at 6, so. And then we have baseball coming up pretty soon, too, so. Lots of options. Less than eight minutes before we get the third period started. Up for Kenny Moore. All right, hold up. Free agency really hit a wall, didn't it? Like we were like getting signing, bang, 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 and then now it's just like dead. Like, can we get some signings, please, so we can do an NFL stream? All right, take care, enjoy your gaming, and uh, hopefully the Kraken end up tying this up or winning. Have a good rest of your day. And again, we'll be live tomorrow at 7 p.m. for the Kraken and the Coyotes, and we should be able to win that matchup. And, uh, 68 points to 61 points. We're better than them. We're on the road. It'll be difficult, but we should be able to find a way to, to win that matchup. It would be a damn shame if we can't even beat them. But again, that's where we're at right now. Hopefully we end up getting some signings as well. I, w I would like to be able to do like a, a freestyle stream or like an NFL stream on Saturday night if possible. And then obviously I'll be watching uh, NASCAR on Sunday before we stream uh, for the Kraken and the Canadians at 6 p.m. So I'm excited about that.
NASCAR Cup Series Series uh, at Circuit of the Americas this weekend in Austin, Texas. Previous winner, Tyler Reddick. Kansas only up by four against Samford. Not Stanford, Samford. But that's what happens, you know, when you have the tourney. You got one game to be able to prove yourself. Race for the Art Ross Trophy. Most points this season. Nikita Kucherov, 119. McKinnon, 117. Connor McDavid, 112. 13 games remaining for McKinnon and Kucherov. 15 for Connor McDavid. Studs, all three of them. Kucherov, McKinnon, McDavid. When can the Kraken get a Kucherov, McKinnon, or McDavid? Can we get one? As soon as we get one, that's when we're going to be good. Big facts. Got the NFL draft coming up, but it's still a little ways away. Hey, as long as they get offensive line, so defense and offensive line are going to be the biggest priority for the Bears. And obviously for a poverty franchise like Chicago, they've never really had a good quarterback. You know, they had McMahon, they've had Jake Cutler, you know, they've had guys, but they've never really had like a superstar quarterback. Like Cutler might've been the best one that they've had, you know, over the years, you know, they had McMahon and the 85 Bears with the headband. You've had Jake Cutler, you know, you've had a few guys like here and there, but you haven't really had anyone significant, you know, to, to really be like proud of. So uh, hopefully for Caleb's sake and the Bears' sake, he pans out. And that'll actually make the Bears watchable. You know, that we actually want to go out of our way to watch them play. So I'm actually hoping that he does pan out. But it's going to be tough out of those six quarterbacks. And it'll be uh, very interesting if Minnesota ends up going for J.J. McCarthy. I mean, I think I think uh, Michael Penix Jr. would be a better fit. And obviously, there's been rumors, you know, Michael Penix Jr. to Vikings, Raiders. I'm not sure if Michael Penix Jr. would be a good fit with the Raiders, but he would look good in that uniform. But they need offensive line and defensive help also. But Michael Penix Jr. going to Devontae Adams would be kind of sexy. going to be the steal of the draft right here. Whoever gets them. Got most touchdown passes in the last two years combined out of anybody. So if they want to keep sleeping on them, you know, and again, you know, Drake May's got potential. Jaden Daniels got potential. If Caleb goes number one, we understand. But And then Knicks, you know, could probably do it on Denver, but I'm not sure if Knicks could do it on any team. But Hopefully uh, there's an offensive line waiting for Penix as well as a defense at some point in his career. And he's got an opportunity to be the, like the NFC's Tua as a lefty and probably better. There, there's a possibility that he could be just as good as Tua or better. And I'm hoping that uh, he could be as, you know, better than Tua, better than Vic, you know, and maybe not Steve Young, but maybe a little under Steve Young. You know, I think that would be the ceiling for Penix if he can keep working, you know, on his game and get on the right team with the right supporting cats and coaches and uh, hopefully having you know a little bit of help we will find out 
All right, third period here. Vegas Golden Knights, one. Seattle Kraken, zero. Let's go. Let's go. Take care of your mental health, y'all. Yeah. I mean, he could be a hybrid player, but he can't stay healthy. It doesn't really matter if he plays fucking linebacker, safety, corner, you know, special teams. Uh, the guy can't stay healthy. So, And if anything, if he plays linebacker instead of safety, what's going to happen? He'll get hurt even sooner. Because there's more physicality playing linebacker than safety. So if you can't even, I mean, if you can't even stay healthy playing safety where you barely even have contact unless you initiate it, uh, you know, I don't think that he's going to last much longer in this league. Come on, Gru. Let's go. Third period underway. Let's go. Come on, Philip. We need you. Let's go. Get those likes up. Like, sub, donate, comment, share. Try to get to 15 to 20 likes if possible. We got a ways to go to the goal. Come on, Kraken. Hannafin, Kolasar, Wa, Howden, Schultz, Dumoulin, Gord, Bjorki, and Tanev. Come on, Seattle. I'm not sure at getting stronger. He's already built strong. It's just that his body is brittle and it breaks down. You know, sometimes genetics, you know, with your bones and your muscles, not everyone is created equal, you know. Like, think about how many amazing athletes we've seen over the years that just can't stay healthy. Like, what could have been with Derrick Rose? What could have been with Brandon Roy? What could have been with Tracy McGrady and some of these other players that we've seen that just can't stay healthy? And Jamal Adams is one of those guys, too. I mean, in college at LSU, he was crazy good, you know. And those first couple of years on the Jets, he was, he was good. But, you know, again, it's like you have to be able to, you know, keep that body as healthy as possible. But sometimes, you know, your body just breaks down. And also, depending on how many surgeries you have, you know, and your body gets weaker and weaker and you're not never as strong as you were prior to surgery. Nice save by Gru. Job, computer, microphone. Your boy. Yeah, J O B. Schwartz, Alexia, Gord, Burakovsky, Borgen. Been saved by Gru. Martinez, Stevenson, Hutton, Carey, Amantha, Barbashev. We need one more to get to 15. Hopefully we can get that. Seventeen forty-two left in the third period. Come on, Borgen. Borgen, Burkowski, Gord, Alexiak, Schwartz. Let's go, Kraken. We need to find a proper line. And again, you know, when you look at a line and you don't see a, one guy that can more than likely score, not a good look. 
you know, and of course you have to, you know, give proper ice time to, you know, each line, but, you know, we got to have Bjorky in a, in a line, uh, you know, Maddie, you know, you, you got to be able to find guys that can uh, produce for us. And we have too many lines where you don't even see anyone that you think can score. That's not a good look. Or maybe you'll get one. You know, the good teams end up having two or three in the line that they can end up scoring. But at least our defense has been great. But we need, we need offensive firepower. That's why we need, like, a premier center. You know, like a top five, top ten player. We need, like, a McKinnon or a Kucherov. Connor McDavid, we need that. And until we get that, we're not going to ever be good. You know, it's like, and then we also need better forwards, better defensemen. You know, goalie play has been kind of up and down. And, you know, I wouldn't mind having another guy, you know, in the rotation that you know, we could see if they might be better than what we have with Decord and Gru. But we need scoring. That's the problem. Better forwards, better defensemen, better center. And it's like, I like the players that we have on the team, but the bottom line is, is like, if you ever want to end up being one of the top teams in the NHL, you got to find better players. We need to have, you know, some top 10 players, you know, on the roster. Either a top five, top 10, you know, 10 defender, top five, top 10 forward, but you know, primarily a top 10 center or a top 10 player overall. Now, you know, we don't got that. But hopefully one day we will. McNabb, Theodore, Colasar, Howden. Come on, Kraken. Oh, we got a penalty. Seattle's got a power play opportunity. Here we go. Finally. Golly. Can we get a tie, please? And we suck at face-offs, too, and that's a big part of losing a lot, too. You know, it's like when you see, like, the face-off percentage is always 50, 60, 70 percent for the other team. No wonder we lose almost every fucking game. You know, it's like you can't be 35 percent on the face-off percentage and thinking that you're going to win. You know, and right now we're only down by one. We're not down 3-0, but too many games where, we're, you know, and sometimes we're sitting 50-50, which is nice, but it seems like most of the games that we play – you know, we're, we're, it's very lopsided. And you got to be able to gain momentum that way because if you win the faceoff, you can get a shot and then you might be able to get a rebound. But if you're not winning faceoffs, you're not going to get those initial shots off and you're not getting a whole lot of rebound opportunities. Come on, baby. Join the party. Eberly, Schultz, McCann, Colvin in and Veneers. This line's a little bit better for the Kraken. Gru's done his job. I mean, what, what else do you want from the guy? 45 minutes in, he's only given up a goal. No, Carlson's fast as shit. Good defense there. There we go. Go, Maddie. Two on two. God, their defense is so good. As soon as it looks like we have a good opportunity, their, their players are so tall and physical. They're great passers. Everyone is huge on their team on defense. McCann, top shelf, just wide. Like, can we get a line with like Bjorki, Maddie, and McCann? Can we get that? Crowd starting to get into it. Twenty-seven shots on goal for Vegas, sixteen for Seattle. And I wouldn't mind, you know, doing, you know, like March Madness, but it just depends on if we're going to be able to get like subs, donos, you know, based off the game that we do. That's the problem, you know. There, there's not enough like superstar, you know, power, you know, with a lot of these, you know, college teams. 
you know, to say, okay, you know, and besides, you know, like Caitlin Clark and like Iowa, but even doing like an Iowa women's game, who knows what kind of results we would get on something like that. You know, it could be good. It could be terrible. You know, some people are interested. Some people don't give a shit, you know, about March Madness in general, women's or men's. So. Good save by Thompson. Unfortunately, not a lot of people are built like you and me, though, Sarah. You know what I mean? Where we have, like, massive appreciation for greatness in many, many sports, you know. Can we win a face-off, please? 13.45 left in the third period. Here we go. We actually won a face-off. Fucking A. Sure to Luxiak, Burkowski, McCann, and Morgan. Come on, baby. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X as well as YouTube. Love you. Appreciate you. Like, sub, donate, comment, share. Help your boy out. 27 shots on goal for the Golden Knights, 17 for the Kraken. And, uh, you know, even though we've been playing second fiddle to Vegas here in this matchup, we're only down one. We have to find a way. Offsides on the line. Yeah, I don't know. I think for just me, I just appreciate greatness wherever it's at. I don't care where it's at, but if you're great at something, you know, I want to watch. You know, if you're if it, if the games mean something, I want to watch. And that's a big reason why I haven't done a lot of Mariner preseason baseball because there's not really anything on the line, and you're not getting a whole lot of uh, opportunities for the players. And then, and you know, the regular season started in Korea, but again, I, I'm not going to do a 3 a.m. stream. You know, how many people are actually going to show up for that? So. You know, so once the Mariners start going, you know, we'll we'll, do, we'll take advantage and do some of those. But you know, we obviously get better support in certain things than others. You know, NFL, college football, wrestling, you know, NASCAR, hockey, basketball, baseball, sometimes hit or miss. So Kansas finally got up seven, huh? Looks like they're going to hang on. Plus, also, too, I love reading and watching film. So that that's another thing that, you know, if I already am doing that anyways, I like to watch film and read that, you know, it just makes sense to keep up on all of the, the greatness that, you know, is going on throughout the year. But I do wish that football season was a little bit longer. But, of course, all that physicality, you know, to the body, you know, it's not like we can have a 20-game regular season in the NFL. They wouldn't be able to make it. So, and plus, once you go to the playoffs, it ends up being, you know, around that mark, you know, but having 20 games in the regular season, I don't think we're ever going to see that. Panthers and Rangers Saturday at five. Yeah, what's the, what are the brackets at now? It was at 10% earlier today. What are the brackets at now? 5%? There's just too many upsets because, again, not enough people watch college basketball to make an educated, you know, guess. You know, like I said, it's like not only do you got to watch your team, you know, play every single game, you have to watch a lot of the games that are on, you know, on a daily basis during the regular season of the top 25 teams. How many people, you know, really do that? I used to when I was younger, you know, and, but I just, you know, I don't have interest for it anymore, you know, just because the, the players, are, you know, aren't the same as they were when I was younger. You know, it's like one and done. So, and I was really good at brackets when I was younger because I was watching a lot. You know, I'd be watching, you know, a couple games, you know, every day, you know, during the season. You know, I'd watch one game and then, you know, like Oregon, and then I'd watch all the top teams play in the top 25. But even if you watch a lot, that doesn't mean that you're going to get the bracket correct. You know, it's like, it's almost impossible, you know, to, to, to get the bracket. 
Less than 1%. Yeah, everyone's bracket is fucked already. Nobody watches enough. And then even if you did watch like to an extreme level, there's always going to be, uh, you know, upsets no matter what. 0.0054. So less than, uh, less than 1%, half of a percentage. Closer to zero perfect brackets. I think this is the lowest it's ever been this early. Normally it's a little bit higher, you know, like 1% to 5% at this point. Or like one to ten percent. You know, it's not usually less than one percent this early in the bracket. That shows you nobody knows anything. They're like, well, I haven't watched any college basketball. Let me just look at the record and the seeding and take a guess. You know, and people wonder why their brackets are fucked all the time. Playing the puck with his hand. Hack. Not happy with that. And also tournament style where you can end up having a bad quarter and then it's over. You know, it's not like best of seven you know, with b baseball, basketball, you know, you know, you know it's like uh, hockey, you know, and, and like I said, the closest thing is going to be like football where it's like you play bad for a quarter or a half, you're fucked and then your season's over. So there's a lot more pressure and some people can handle that pressure and, you know, a lot of, a lot of teams can't. You just got to be able to take, take advantage of your moment in the NFL and the college football and then. Obviously, in a in a turning style like March Madness, and that's why you end up seeing you know uh, underdogs that end up making it to the Final Four, where sometimes you'll have like a 12 seed or an eight seed somehow that they fucking get there. It's not all going to be number one seeds, you know. You might get one or two number one seeds, or you know maybe uh, a couple ones and a two, but it seems like every year you're going to have like a four or a five or an eight. You know, there's always going to be some like rando team that no one expected. That you know just you know found its way in the right bracket in the right seating at the right time that overachieved and you know but how often do you end up getting a final four team that ends up being lower seated that wins it all almost never so you, usually if you have like two ones and a two and like a nine the chance of the nine even winning the final four matchup is almost zero so it, it happens once in a while you know and if that nine ends up going to the championship they're not winning uh, the Cinderella story typically ends there either at the Final Four or in the championship game. Or you'll just have curses on certain teams, you know, like you see with the Chargers and the Cowboys. It's like Gonzaga. Gonzaga is fucking cursed in college basketball. Like, no matter how good they are, no matter how many wins they get, no matter if they're a number one seed over and over and over again, they never fucking win. You know, it's like they always fucking choke. Stevenson. Marchesone. Wow, just wide left. Marchesone, Stevenson, Theodore, Barbachev, Eichel. Another great line for the Golden Knights here on the power play. Wouldn't be uh, surprised if they get a goal in the next couple minutes. We got Larson, Alexiak, Tanev, Cartier. Not good enough to be able to keep up with these guys. Mariners seven, Red six. What a comeback. They only had one win a couple weeks ago. They're almost 500 now. They literally were like one and eight, you know, one and nine, one and 10, and now they're 12 and 13, which isn't good. But considering you only had one win out of like eight or nine losses, and now it's 12 and 13, that's pretty good. And our hitting is getting much, much better in the last couple weeks. I like to see that. So we're, we're definitely getting hot at the right time as we're going into the regular season. Hopefully Seattle can overachieve and we can make the playoffs this year and hopefully the World Series or at least the ALDS or ALCS. But we're coming. Our time is coming, you know, especially with a top 10 player like Julio, arguably the best pitching staff in baseball, one through five. Definitely got a top three rotation. It's just a matter of time if we can just put it together. Good save. But, of course, as soon as uh, Gru saves it, what happened? We can't even get it out of the crease normally. And then uh, Vegas gets, like, three shots at every opportunity. And he's only given up one goal. Guy deserves a fucking raise. 
scoring chances. Uh, Vegas with 21, cracking 11. Uh-oh, Kansas only up by two, huh? Probably going to come down to free throws at the end. As long as they have good free throw shooters, they should be able to hang on. Like, sub, donate, comment, share. Help your boy out. I'm just hoping one day they'll implement all the other stats on the other platforms. Then everything will be good. If they have the ability to like and comment and donate on that other platform. Then we'll be in business. 31 shots on goal for Vegas, 17 for the Kraken. Less than 10 minutes to go in the third period. Evans, Schultz, Schwartz, Burkowski, McCann for the Kraken. Golden Knights got Carlson, Amadio, Hannafin, Doyle Fayad. Come on, baby. I wish I could get more excited about, you know, uh, NBA and March Madness, too. But again, just based on how things have been the last couple of years, I mean, I, I should have a little bit more excitement, you know, for March Madness compared to the NBA. But hopefully at some point uh, that excitement will come back. Probably won't come back until, we, you know, maybe Final Four. You know, and at that point I'll get a little bit more interested. But. And obviously the championship game. Or if Oregon keeps, you know, uh, you know, winning, then that'll get me, you know, more interested. Shot wide right. McNabb, March Assault, Theodore, Barbashev, and Eichel. Yeah, they has got too many fucking good players. It's ridiculous. Lexiak, Bjorkstrand, Borg, and Yamamoto, Cartier. Come on, Seattle. Oh, good pass. Cartier had a chance there. Veneers, Tolvin, and Borg, and Larson, Eberle. Come on now. 8.17 left in the third period. Yeah, fucking A, man. I even got the Vegas background all, like, you know, bright and beautiful. I wasn't expecting a, a defensive fucking juggernaut kind of game. Every game that we played Vegas, we always play up to the competition. 4-1, we lost in October. Then we won the Winter Classic 3-0 in Seattle. And then we lost a heartbreaker last week, 5-4, where we were ahead almost the whole fucking game. And then we lost 5-4 in OT. So this is a little odd. You know, this is the lowest scoring matchup that we've had all season between the two teams. I don't know if it's because of the jerseys or what's going on, but one-point game. Well, they don't got Danny Manning or Paul Pierce out there. I'll tell you that. Maddie. Maddie shooting from like 50 feet away. Like, what, the, what, what, what kind of scoring are you going to be able to get shooting from that far away? I mean, I know sometimes you can get lucky shooting from that far back. You know, it's like where you're almost like mid-ice, you know, or it's like a deep three range like in, in the NBA, you know, but. You know, it's not like we got Steph Curry on our team, you know, to be able to do that. We don't got Kucherov. We don't got Connor McDavid. We don't got Nathan McKinnon, baby. Well, we got an opportunity for a power play. Hannafin, sit down. We're, we're hanging around. All right, what do we got? Stevenson, Carrier, Mantha, Haug. We have a chance on this line. All right, Tata, Tanev, Yamamoto, Beniers, and Evans. All right, we might have an opportunity, uh, possibly. Possibly. No guarantees, though. But the sad thing is, is if it stays, uh, you know, 1-0, empty net, I mean, we'll see what happens. Realistically, we'd probably end up losing 2-0 at that point. But if we tie it and then we go to OT, we're terrible in overtime. So we would end up probably losing 2-1. And if it were to happen, it would be like Eichel getting a goal in overtime. You know, we would lose, you know, 2-1. So I, I hope that we can put up something, but 
You know, being a Pacific Northwest fan is tough. You know, but again, a lot of us are battle tested. We've gone through lots of uh, years of frustration. So when we end, when we end up having it, it doesn't really surprise us or anything. It's the kind of we're used to it, we're numb to it. You know, but hopefully we can get to a point where that changes. And I think it'll change with the Mariners this year. I think we're gonna have a very good chance to make the wild card or even overachieve and win the division. Again, most people think we're gonna get third. You know, between uh, the Astros and Rangers being better, but if the hitting can be you know better than 220, 230 as a team like we were last year, and we don't strike out as much, and the pitching is better, and the hitting is better, you know, we have a chance you know to go from 80 to 89 wins to go to the next step and go 90 to 100, and then once we hit that, 100 to 105. You know, it's not going to be easy, but I mean, our roster is better this year than it was last year. Am I going to miss uh, Kellenek? Not really. Am I going to miss Teoscar? Yes. Am I going to miss Eugenio Suarez? Yes. You know, but again, Eugenio's on the Diamondbacks. The Oscars on the Dodgers, you know, and then fucking Kellenic went to the Braves, but he's been asked. He can't even hit. So all three of them went to pretty good teams there. But Kellenic is going to be the worst one out of the three. And, you know, his immaturity and everything, uh, you know, we had to we had to let him go. But I definitely am going to miss the Oscar. But most importantly, I'm going to miss you, you know, Suarez for his good vibes. Him, Julio, and JP were like the heart and soul of the team. So... We're going to have to come up with another leader, you know, besides Julio and JP. All right, come on, Seattle. Schultz, Tata, Tanev, Yamamoto, and Evans. Dolvin in. Schultz, one timer, wide right, Beniers, rebound. Tolvin in to Eberly. Good pass to Schultz. Another good pass to McCann. Rebound. Hawk. Fucking defense is so good for Vegas. No matter what we fucking do out there. All right, another line change. Short, Bjorkstrand, Burakovsky, Yamamoto, Evans, Martinez, Stevenson, Hutton, and Waugh for the Golden Knights. He'll strike out a lot, but he'll get some clutch RBIs. And look who he's playing with. Fucking Mookie, Freddie, and Otani. Ridiculous. You know, he's, he's playing with a lot of amazing players. So just being surrounded around that amazing talent, he'll play good. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, Eugenio Suarez will find his rhythm with Corbin Carroll and company too. Yes! Boom! There we go. Riker Evans, motherfucker. 1-1. One, one. Let's go. Jesus. There we go. Hey, it, <laughs> it takes us that long, but we got it. Is that Riker or Jaden Schwartz? Jaden Schwartz with the goal with the tip and assisted by Riker Evans and Oliver Bjorkstrand. All right, Jaden. Did they give it to Jaden or Riker? I think they gave it to Jaden. Yeah, they gave it to Jaden. Nice job, Jaden. Good shit. Finally. They got the Shinsuke Nakamura uh, theme music in the background. Nice job, Jaden. Jaden Schwartz, assisted by Riker Evans and Oliver Bjorkstrand, were knotted up at one, baby. Last time I checked, he was like one for 25 or something. His uh, batting percentage was like point, uh, like, you know, kind of like what the bracket percentage was. That was like his batting average. You know, so he's been fucking terrible. And of course, he's in his own head, too. You know, obviously, uh, you know, maybe a little bitter with the whole Seattle situation, but then you're going to Atlanta. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better place to go, but. Oh, what a game, huh? Grubauer. Kansas survives. Can we survive? Survive if I let you. We're going to pull out our inner Taz. Nice save. Now Vegas is getting a little frustrated. 
McNabb, March and Salt, Theodore, Barbashev, and Eichel. Eberle, Alexiak, Borgen, Povenin, and Veneer. Time for Bowie. Kraken? 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 Release the Kraken. Bowie? He likes it. He said, about time, bitches. There we go. Drop that anchor. Kraken. Let's go. Our mental health just went up a little bit there. Hey, I put hack on the goddamn thumb. I mean, we, we got to get this dub. Yeah, Kansas will probably get knocked off in the next round or the round after that. So, oh, oh, oh. I mean, especially with this amazing background. Could have just did the standard, you know. Could have did this. It's nice to kind of, you know, mix it up a little bit. And they're in Vegas, so, you know, eye-popping. Okay, sports gods. I, I know we suck. We're, we're not going to the playoffs. We're fucking terrible. But Grubauer is doing a good job. Can we, can, if we go to overtime, can we just find a way to win? You know, Vegas is going to go to the playoffs. Who knows how good they're going to do. But let's just try to, you know, get this victory. Just this one. Thank you. Oh, let's see if the sports gods are listening. I'll take a 2-1 win. You know what would be really awesome is if we could actually get another goal in this last 545 so we don't have to go to overtime. How's your bracket looking? Everyone's bracket is fucking busted. Let's go, baby. Be electric. They're happy about it. Go, oh, baby. Who's going to be the hero? Maddie? Tyler? Yorkie? Let's go. Have the faith. Where is uh, the Blues at position wise uh, compared to the other teams? Are you close to being uh, in the wild card? Where, where are you sitting at? You got a 13 out of 16. Good job. My buddy Justin, the one that I go road tripping with, in the first eight games, he was eight for eight. But I don't know how many, uh, I don't know how many games he's at now. I imagine he lost a couple, you know, since then. But he messaged me. He's like, bro, I'm eight for eight so far. Because he's doing one at his workplace and they have like a 250 gift card and then other gift cards depending on how you finish and whatnot. And he said he wanted to wear his wrestling belt if he ended up winning. To give them a reason to be able to bust it out at work. But I told them, I mean, this bracket is tough. I mean, especially if you haven't watched a whole lot of college basketball. I mean, it's just pretty much you're just guessing at that point, looking at the record, looking at the team, looking at the seed, and then just, you know, going with your gut and hoping that your gut is good enough. All right, 508 left. McNabb, Stevenson, Theodore, Carrier, and Mantha. All right, we got line change. Hannah Fan, Kolasar, Wah, Howden, and Haug. And then we got Eberly, Alexiak, Borg, and Tolvanen, and Veneers. Off the post, fuck! Oh, so close. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Almost. Off the post. You've got to be kidding me. All right, where's the momentum? Uncle Mo, you know, has shifted to the Kraken. Let me see how close this was. Oh, my God. Like, literally inside the post, but then it ricocheted out like by, like, an inch. I mean, the football is a game of inches, but hockey is, too, especially when it ends up hitting that post because the post is only so big. But we're, we're definitely more aggressive here in the last eight minutes, which I like to see. All right, 409 left. Come on, baby. Schultz, Schwartz, Burkowski, McCann, Evans. Play some defense. Let's go. Haig, Howden, Wah, Colasar, Hannafin. 
Not the greatest line for Vegas. We can take advantage. Let's go. 409 left in the third period. We're knotted up at one. If you're just tuning in, Jack Eichel, the captain, uh, got a goal in the first period, assisted by Jonathan Marchessault and Brady McNabb. Second period was just dead. And then third period, Jaden Schwartz on a power play, assisted by Riker Evans and Oliver Bjorkstrand. And that's where we're at right now, which is a little unusual because the previous three games were 4 1 Vegas. 3-0 Kraken on the Winter Classic on January 1st, and then we lost last week 5-4 in overtime, which we should have fucking won. So this would be payback for that game that we lost uh, in Seattle. Come on now. But uh, if it goes to overtime, 90% chance we're going to lose because we just, we're just fucking terrible in OT and in shootouts. We have to find a way to try to win in regulation here, if possible. Yeah, we do. 34 shots on goal for uh, the Golden Knights, 20 for the Kraken, 36 hits for Vegas, 30 for the Kraken. So we've got aggressive and we've caught up to that number because they had about 15 to 20 more hits than us. Now we're only six behind. So the aggressiveness and the focus has gone up. Penalty minutes, eight and six. Seattle has eight, Vegas six, but you know, a lot of minors. But the faceoff percentage is the big one, 63% to 37 you know, we got to make a, a change there. We got to get that closer to 50 50. But again, when you don't have an all star center or a good center, it makes it a little tougher. Less than three minutes to go in the third period. Now, Captain Jack Eichel, tw 22 minutes on ice. He's been down there for a lot. Like, sub, donate, comment, share, help your boy out. Help us out, Megan. Help us out, Sarah. Let's go. We need six more likes uh, to get to 20. So if you're in the room and you haven't smashed the like button, please do. If you're watching on Twitter slash X, you'd have to obviously come to the YouTube side you know, to do that. But please do. It'll help us out with our algorithm and analytics and metrics. It takes one second to hit the fucking like button. Good save. Glove save. We've got to make sure we're taking advantage of these moments, especially when we're having 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 people in the room. You know, so for, uh, you know, that process, Sarah, that we were doing before for the likes and the, the donos, you know, moving forward, you know, this needs to be something that we're, we're keeping up on. We don't want to let opportunities slip. We want to make sure that we're getting the most out of every stream that we're doing. You know, remember back in the day, there was going to be some streams where, you know, we, we had a couple people like you and me, and that was it. We, we got to make sure we're taking advantage of every single moment that we have an opportunity like this moving forward, especially if things are going to be, you know, this type of way moving forward. So 35 shots on goal for Vegas, 21 for the Kraken. We can't be, we can't be lax on, on the streams. You know, like I said, if we want to grow, you know, the work needs to be put in. You know, we have to make sure we're maintaining that every, you know, five to ten minutes, you know. Minute 20 left in the third period. Fuck! God damn it. 2-1 Vegas. Big goal. Fucking A. Keegan Colasar. That might have been the end of the Kraken. All right, Keegan, I see you. Especially if, you know, the two of you are going to be here and, and grinding it out with me. You know, we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of these moments. I mean, especially if we're already typing and talking about things throughout the stream anyways. The team effort, I can't do it by myself. 
Keegan Colasar, assisted by Brett Howden and Nicholas Waugh. 2 1 Vegas with a minute 20 left. Why don't you rip my fucking heart out, huh? Brutal. Bye, bananas. Bye, bananas. Keegan Colasar with the backhand, assisted by Brett Howden and Nicholas Waugh. Now, can we challenge this here? Seattle's challenging. So what do we think? Is that offsides or not? Let me look at the replay here. Ah, that's close. Very tight call. <laughs> the replay. Frame by frame. Yeah, probably inconclusive. I mean, it, that's so fucking close. A lot of them are, you know, once they zoom in and they go frame by frame, you know, you will see it. You know, it'll be pretty clear, but situation room in Toronto. The situation room. Two more likes to 20. If you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. I mean, at this point, you know, just give them the goal, you know. I mean, realistically, we would have lost in OT, and Eichel probably would have ended up getting a goal or March So, you know, we're not very good in OT. That's close. I mean, if Seattle would have had that same situation happen, we would want it to, you know, stand as well. So, I would just, you know, have it, have it just stay as is. Tough, tough, tough. Too close. Call stands. Oh, now we got a, what, a minute 20 left to have a miracle happen to go to OT just to have our hearts ripped out again if we end up getting a goal. Hack's eyebrows went in different direction there. Now Vegas fans jumping up and down with joy. Fuck. Oh, they're dancing. They're having a good time. They're partying there in Vegas. Yeah. Which I think was the right call. 
Because again, if we have a similar situation, you know, for the Kraken down the road, we're going to want to have that stand as well. So, all right, 43 seconds left for a fucking miracle. And, uh, you know, at this point, when you have something like that, that happens, you know, half of the team might still be locked in and the other half is probably already thinking, fuck, we lost. You know, and if you have half of the team like, fuck, we lost, then you did lose. You know, you have to believe that you can come back. And even if you have everyone on the ice believing, it still might not be enough. I mean, hell, it took us long enough to even get a fucking goal in the third period. So, Gru did a fantastic job today. I mean, there's nothing more that you could have asked for from him. You know, two goals out of a team like Vegas that typically can score three to seven on almost any given night. So, And they got the power play on top of that. Brutal. 14 seconds left in the third period. Marchesol, Hutton, Theodore, Hannafin, and Eichel, Eberly, Schultz, Burakovsky, McCann, and Veneers. Ten seconds to go. Brutal. Empty net for Seattle, but I don't think it's going to matter. Vegas' defense is uh, supreme. Oh, if we actually had someone there for the rebound, we could have scored there. Jesus. Sometimes you got to have guys in the right position for that rebound and then empty net, another goal, 3-1 Vegas, and that is the end of the Kraken. Nice job, Vegas. Chandler Stevenson, 3-1 Golden Knights. Nobody there to clean up the rebound. Nice job by Chandler. I mean, if we had just one player, you know, near the goalie, we we might be able to, you know, to kind of slap it in. But all right, Chandler, I see. Final score: Vegas three, Kraken one. It's just the story of a uh, story of the Kraken all season long. Well, congratulations to the Vegas Golden Knights doing their thing. Oh, tough, tough, tough. Final score, Vegas 3, Seattle 1. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X, as well as the people watching on YouTube as well. Uh, I love you guys, and I appreciate you very, very much. Shout out to all the people that donated, commented, shared. Appreciate you, Megan, Sarah, Matt, and everyone else. And I got one question for you. Who you know talks sports like us? Your boy, Ryan, Northwest Sports Fanatics, and I'm out. Guys.